exciting edition of our interview segment. Of course, today we'll be discussing with Mr. Yang. Mr. Yang is the technical director of our National Club in Dubai. You're welcome to us. Can you give us an insight into your playing career as a footballer? Yeah, I used to play for the academy for my hometown. and uh, I was born in Holland, in Venlo. But I didn't really break through uh, into the first team, so then I moved to another club. It was second, third division. But uh, I was not really happy with playing on that level. And then I could return to my former club as a coach. And that was already at the age of 24. And that's actually where my coaching career started. I was uh, also studying at the sports university. So my interest for sport, my interest for being a coach was already at a young age there. And then I make a decision. I couldn't have a big career like a player. But I could develop myself as a coach, and that's what I did. You have a very uh, rich profile as a manager and um, coach in different countries and club across the globe. The current being the technical director of our national club in Dubai, can you share your, those experiences with us? Yeah, so the, I started in this club this season from the 1st of July, before having worked five years for Al Jazeera Club in Abu Dhabi in a similar role. My main role, uh, especially for the first team, is the recruitment of first team players. And that means the recruitment of foreigners. We can have four foreigners in, in our team. And now also there's a new rule, we can also recruit young players. Um, that's what we did in the beginning of the season. We recruited the foreigners and at the moment we also recruiting the young players. And one more task of me is to be responsible for the whole technical area within the club. So not only first team, connection with the second team, the reserves, also the connection with the academy and the second team and the first team. So now I'm focusing more on the academy part and also the recruitment for foreign players uh, for the academy. Okay. You, looking at your profile, you are not new in Africa. What is your experience like as the coach of Ajax in Cape Town? Yeah, that was quite an interesting experience. But I came in a, in a situation where the owners, 51% is from Ajax Amsterdam, the 49% are owned by uh, South Africans, and there were two, two families, they had the 49%, mm -hmm. but the moment I came in, they were fighting. Oh. And <laughs> So it was a very difficult situation, but I enjoyed really working with the players because that's my main role, that's my main job. And what, what I most like of working with those guys is they are very uh, polite, they are very cheerful, they always have a smile on their face, so that gives you also as a coach a lot of energy. Okay. What's the most Halloween experience as a coach? Uh, that was also in South Africa. I was part of the, uh, the staff for the Australian national team and the moment they played the World Cup in South Africa and that's really fantastic to be on the highest platform in the world to be part of it. Can you give us a preview um, of your mission in Nigeria? Is it just to scout for young talented players? for your club or to also build the relationship within your club in Nigeria? Yeah. Um, grassroots football? Yeah, so first of all, of course, the reason why I'm here is to see uh, if we can recruit good talented, young good talented players from Nigeria to introduce them in our academy and give them an opportunity to grow and to develop for our first team. But of course, it's not like going into a supermarket and see what you can get. I see this also to build a relation with the Nigerian clubs, with the Nigerian Federation to see if we can build a long-lasting uh, relationship and with that also you can try to improve and selecting your players but also maybe you can have some influence in how to develop players in Nigeria. This is your first time to Nigeria? Yeah. You've been in Nigeria. What is your tip back home? What experience, what's your takeaway about Nigeria? What do you feel about Nigeria? Yeah, but that uh, I, I lived and worked in nine different countries 
and the moment you get in a new country, it's the, the feeling you get. The moment you get out of the plane and you go into the airport, then you already get a feeling of, of the country. And my feeling was I feel, felt like at home. I didn't feel I'm in a strange country and everybody looks at me. No, I feel like, hey, you step some, like you're stepping in somebody's house, uh, living room. And that's yeah, something what I really uh, enjoyed a lot. And the experience for being now here for three days is the hospitality of the people, the kindness of the people, and everybody try to help you. And for sure, one thing, one thing is sure, everybody loves football. So what's your assessment of Nigerian football and your advice? Yeah, this country has a huge potential. Only, not only from the numbers of people who live here, also because everybody loves football, everybody likes to play football. So there's a lot of talent. The, the most important part of developing talent is giving young players the opportunity to develop. What does that mean? They need to play, they need to have access to good coaches who understand what it is for each age group, how to develop the player. Because each age group has a specific requirement how you have to deal with those young players. What they have in, in, as, a, as a basic, they are strong, they are fast, they are technical good. I know many times, even today when we watch the training of the, the games, the pitch is not so good, but that has also an advantage because you have to be technical very good to be able to play football on a pitch like that. For sure, the, the, if you have better facilities and the pitches will be better, that will also help to develop the speed of the game. And that's important when you want to make an international step. Now you're done with your scouting program and you selected some players during your scouting program. What are the expectations of the players selected? The, the, we selecting the players and we make a pre-selection and from this pre-selection we're going to make a final list and with the final list we're going to invite the players to come over to Dubai and to stay for two weeks in our club to see how they feel about the club and also to see how they can can mingle with the players we have so this was like a pre-selection and the next step will be the final selection to give them an opportunity to play for our club. As an experienced coach, what's your greatest regret so far? Yeah, you, everybody in his life makes choices. And sometimes you make good choices, sometimes you make not so good choices. Um, uh, probably what, what I miss a little bit, and that's because I left Holland 25 years ago. And that was my first experience abroad was going to Japan. And after my experience in Japan, I never came back to Holland as a coach. And at the moment I left Holland, I had quite a good name. I had good result in Holland also. So maybe the regret could be that if I would have stayed in Holland, maybe I could have coached higher teams in Holland. But from the other side, the decision enriched my life so much to be in a position to work and live in nine different countries and to meet many people connected by football. Let's talk about your personal life now. Let's talk about culture. You visited the most um, prominent traditional villa, that's the first class traditional villa in Abuja. Do you have such thing in your country? No, when, when you see uh, the way they develop players in my country, it's, it's a more controlled way, it's a regular way. It's, it's built on the family. It's built on the schools, and after it's coming football. But for example, when I was in Azerbaijan with the uh, one of the biggest academies there, there is everything focused on football. And what is coming additional is the development, the education, the language, the behavior, all those things. So when I see in Africa for th that part, I see big opportunities to build an academy who can even surplus the European Academy because they have more opportunities and possibilities to work 24-7 with the players. I'm going to ask you a very dicey question now. Do you, have you ever tested any Nigeria? You can, you've been in Nigeria for three days. Yeah. 
Did you test any Nigerian delicacy, any Nigerian meal? <laughs> I don't know in the hotel what we actually exactly uh, got. There was local food. I don't know exactly the, the name. But uh, to be honest, if I eat Nigerian food, no, I cannot say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. After retiring from, from your daily activities, how do you unwind? How do you relax? Uh, actually, it never stops. Uh, the moment we, we wake up early, 6, to, six in the morning, and then we prepare for the games, we're watching the players. And when we come back in the afternoon, I make some notes about the players. I keep up my administration, check my emails, because still there's some work in Dubai to do. So I keep in touch with the club also. And then I try to relax a little bit, but I haven't been out, out of the hotel since we came back uh, from the scouting part. What about in Dubai? How do you want? How do you relax? Uh, yeah, in Dubai, my wife sometimes coming to Dubai, sometimes she's uh, in her home country. So if we are together, we spend some time oh. having dinner outside. But if I'm alone, I'm either in the club or in my house. It's uh, seven days per week work. Oh. All right, Mr. Yang. Thank you. This is where we enter this edition of our interview segment. Now you're having you on our platform once again. Until I come your way next time, I remain your regular host, Princess Abigail Abalaha, reporting from for Supreme City.